Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Madhu Goel, Director of Otis La Farm, and today I'm going to talk about something which is not so often discussed and that is preeclampsia. So preeclampsia is a complication which is unique to human pregnancy. It is a condition in which there is high blood pressure along with organ damage. So it can occur in patients who have been normotensive before, that means in patients in whose blood pressure has been normal before or it can be superimposed in patients who have had high blood pressure before pregnancy. This condition typically impacts late in third trimester but it can develop any time after 20 weeks of pregnancy. And in rare instances, it can also develop after delivery where we call it a postpartum preeclampsia. It occurs in about 5-10% to of pregnancies and in the severe form it occurs in about 2-3% to of the pregnancies. So what really happens in preeclampsia? Now it may be completely asymptomatic, that means you may not feel a thing and when you go to your doctor, your doctor may say that oh you have preeclampsia or you may have symptoms. Symptoms like nausea, vomiting, headache, which is not getting relieved by medicines, blurring of vision, shortness of breath, pain in your right side in the upper abdomen, swelling of the feet, which is not going away on breast, swelling of fingers, swelling of face, sudden weight gain, all of these symptoms may indicate preeclampsia. And then when we run the investigations, we find that there are proteins in the urine. So whenever the amount of proteins exceeds 300 in the urine, it is called significant proteinuria or your urine protein creatinine ratio gets altered. The other thing that we can discover is that the liver function tests are altered or when we do an ultrasound, the baby's growth may be impacted. So the cause of preeclampsia is supposed to be a uteroplacental dysfunction. Now when the placenta is forming, that is early on in the pregnancy, due to some reasons, it does not form nicely. The blood supply in the placenta does not develop properly. At some point in pregnancy, the placenta cannot take the stress of the growing baby. So what happens is, this stressed out placenta starts disseminating some chemicals, which can cause inflammatory reaction of the body. So which are the women who are at risk for preeclampsia? Any woman who has had preeclampsia in the past, any patient who is more than 35 years of age, who has a family history of preeclampsia, who has twins or triplet pregnancy, who has diabetes, obesity is another factor which predisposes to preeclampsia, any family history of preeclampsia, let's say your mother had preeclampsia in her pregnancies. So all of these patients are at risk for preeclampsia. In addition, if you have any autoimmune disease, any kidney disease, you will be at a higher risk for preeclampsia. So there are certain screening tests available for preeclampsia. These screening tests are done at 12 weeks of pregnancy. That means when you go to your doctor for your level 1 scan, remember we talked about this while we were talking about management of pregnancy. So when you go to your doctor with a level 1 scan and she orders a double marker test along with that a preeclampsia screen can be ordered so preeclampsia screening includes uh, your complete history your ultrasound and then it will include some blood tests like PIGF and PAP A and a combination of these tests will tell you whether you are at risk for developing preeclampsia or not a negative test decreases the chances of you developing preeclampsia whereas if you have positive tests you are put on low dose aspirin now aspirin as we all know is a vasodilator it increases the blood flow to the organ if started before 16 weeks of pregnancy it can improve the blood supply to the placenta so if you've been watching my video since the beginning you will realize that when i talked about the cause of preeclampsia i told you that it is defective vascularization of the placenta which causes preeclampsia so ecosprin will help with development of these blood vessels in the placenta now if we have a better blood vessel development in the placenta the chances of preeclampsia will decrease or the onset of development of preeclampsia will be delayed 
So any patient who is at a high risk for developing preeclampsia should start a low dose ecosprin at bedtime before 16 weeks of pregnancy. So preeclampsia has a lot of complications which we will discuss in next video. However, prevention is important. So prevention can start pre-pregnancy. That means one should attain a healthy weight before getting pregnant, stop smoking and one should start with prenatal examinations as soon as you get pregnant. Get a preeclampsia screening test done in the first trimester, start a low dose aspirin and throughout pregnancy keep a watch for the signs and symptoms of preeclampsia. That will go a long way in giving a good result despite you having preeclampsia. Hopefully you will find this information uh, useful and stay in touch with me to get more updates.